Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Authentication and Authorization Basics, Part 1. Today, we're going to begin by talking about identification, authentication, and authorization, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on some authentication concepts. I have a fair amount of information to go over, not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We will begin by talking about identification, authentication, and authorization. Three basic security concepts that are tied together are identification, authentication, and authorization. Identification is when an entity specifically declares who or what it is in a manner in which the receiving party understands. When the entity is a person and the receiving party is a computer, the most common form of identification is a username. Authentication is a process where the identifying party offers some form of credentials to validate the identification, as in supplying a password with the username. Authorization is what the authenticated entity is allowed to access or the actions that may be taken by that authenticated entity as in authorization to access the FTP server and modify files on that same server. That would require authorization. There are some common identification methods. The first one is the username. Usernames should be unique to the system that is being accessed. There are also personal identification verification cards, which are usually issued by an accepted authority as in the U.S. government or state government or the organization that is accepting the identification. A personal identification verification card may also contain information on authentication, as in it may contain information on biometric values of the user. Another common form of identification is biometrics. It is a physical trait that is unique to the individual that is difficult to modify or change, as in a fingerprint. When using an authentication service, they usually require some form of authentication factor. There are some common authentication factors that are used. There is the something you know, as in a username and password. There's the something you are, as in biometric patterns. Something you have, as in a security token or smart card, a newer authentication factor is the something you do, as in a repetitive typing pattern. Those can be as unique as a fingerprint. And finally, there is the somewhere you are, as in the GPS location or IP address that is requesting access. It's time to conclude with a brief discussion on some authentication concepts. First up is multi-factor authentication. This is requiring more than one of the authentication factors to be present before the authentication process can be completed. Multi-factor authentication is more secure than just requiring a single one of the factors. A username and password is a single factor authentication method as both of those come from the something you know category. Multi-factor authentication requires that the factors come from different categories. So requiring a username, password, and a fingerprint scan is a two-factor authentication method. Those come from the something you know category combined with the something you are category. Then there is single sign-on or SSO. This is requiring the user to identify and authenticate only once to achieve access to all authorized services within a network. In the past, every time a user needed to access a different resource, that resource was required to authenticate the user before authorizing the access. This took time and did create some network congestion. Single sign-on will reduce the network traffic that is required and will also speed up the process. Identity Federation. This is an SSO method used in organizations with multiple networks that allow authenticated users to sign on once and receive access to authorized resources across all of the organization's networks. In some cases, Identity Federation may rely upon 
transitive trust authentication. This is the process of authenticating an entity based on that entity already being authenticated by a security entity that is trusted. For example, X is authenticated by organization T, but is requesting authentication from organization A. A doesn't know X. Since organization A trusts the security of organization T, A will authenticate X automatically. That is transitive trust authentication. There is access control. This is the process of establishing specifically who or what can be authenticated and how that authentication will be done before authorization is granted to resources. Another authentication concept is the implicit deny. All access is automatically denied through the implicit deny until the authentication process has been completed. And finally, there is the trusted OS or trusted operating system. This is used to denote an operating system that uses multiple layers of security before access is granted to resources on the system. So a trusted OS will implement authentication and authorization before granting access to resources on that system. Now that concludes this session on authentication and authorization basics part one. I began by talking about identification, authentication, and authorization, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on some authentication concepts. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.